Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A mystery in the lake, the discovery of a missing plane, but with no bodies on board. There is a big mystery right now unfolding up in northern Michigan. This plane was found at the bottom of Lake Michigan. You're about to see it here, uh, but the people on board are still missing. The passenger and pilot are both local businessmen and their family and friends are desperate for answers. Let's get to Coco McAvoy. She's live with new information on what went wrong. Coco. Yes, good afternoon. Police believe the plane went down after having engine trouble, and now police are searching for Emmanuel Manos and his friend Randall Dippold. Now let's show you their flight path. They were coming from northern Michigan, headed to Monroe, Michigan, but their plane did not make it there and ended up going down near Frankfurt. Uh, single engine aircraft out over the lake. An alert from Minneapolis Air Traffic Control 11 days ago after the pilot made the distress call. And he lost his engine. After days of searching, Michigan State Police made a recovery. Troopers used sonar technology to find the plane that went down near Frankfurt, but the two men aboard the plane are still missing. Uh, we're happy to provide the families of these people with, with some information, being that we found the airplane, uh, but we certainly recognize that closure might be difficult to find without actually finding uh, the missing loved ones here. Uh, and our continued thoughts and prayers are with the family. Police say Emmanuel Manos and Randall Dippold were flying from Antonagon to Monroe, Michigan, when their plane's engine locked up. The plane went off the radar about four miles from the shoreline in Frankfurt. The two men haven't been seen since. They likely landed the plane. It's, it's relatively in good condition um, that they likely landed the plane and then exited the, the aircraft and then uh, were in the water. Police are considering this case a recovery mission and are using every possible resource to find Manos and Dippold. And multiple police agencies are searching for the two men as we speak, and they do not plan to stop that search until they find them. Reporting live this afternoon, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. Okay, Coco. Some breaking news to tell you about right now. This massive tree falls to the ground, trapping a child underneath. That tree also crushed a car. Yeah, let's get to, to Jermont Terry, who's on the scene on Wyoming, just off Linden, uh, which is on the city's west side. Jermont? Devin and Kimberly is somewhat of a scary situation, but as you pointed out, some good news. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt. Let me try to set the scene for you. Take a look. This big tree here on Wyoming, it just came down, crashing right onto this car here. But if you take a few steps with me, I want to show you, set this scene for you. There were children, at least three of them, playing up right here in front of this house. And you can see where this big tree just came down, crashing right on top of the three young girls that were playing out here. Now, I had a chance to talk to the 13-year-old who talks about how she narrowly escaped getting out from underneath this tree. You know, all you heard was crack, 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 and the tree just came through. Yeah, I just like did this so I could take cover of myself, and my friend, she just ran out, and I was really scared. I pulled myself way out, and I heard my leg and my shoe was up there. The grace of God, no one, she didn't get killed. That was the main thing. But the tree is old, termites is rotting, it should have been trimmed up, we cut passed. down a long time ago. We That's passed. what I'm now, it's unclear if anyone ever complained to the city about this particular tree, but the situation out here on Wyoming, thankfully, Aisha and her friends are, in fact, safe, despite the fact that this horrific tree just kind of fell down on this frightening situation here. Again, Wyoming, we're on the west side here, three girls playing here, beautiful day out, and this tree just came crashing down. Thankfully, all of them walked away. Aisha's shoe is still underneath all of this mess, but she's home inside her home right now this afternoon. For now, reporting live on the city's west side with breaking news, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Well, all right, Jermont. Tonight we're learning more about why a suspect was trying to escape Detroit police when he opened fire over the weekend and one officer was shot, though that officer is uh, going to be okay. Let's get to Sean Lay, who's uh, been learning a little bit more about that suspect's past. Sean. A lot more. We're learning tonight that this suspect uh, was wanted for a gun crime when he encountered police allegedly firing those shots. But after what happened inside court today, he is not going anywhere tonight. 
Over the weekend, police faced a man willing to try to kill them to get away. A suspect used his car as a weapon, pinning and hurting two Detroit police officers. Then he got out and allegedly opened fire, hitting another officer. Now we know the identity of that man, suspected of launching that attack on police. He was actually in court today, and our cameras were there. Then engaged in a shootout with uh, uh, the all three of the officers that were there on scene, struck one of those officers in the, the lower abdomen, Your Honor. Here he is using a walker and sitting back in his chair pretending to sleep. He's recovering from being shot by police when they returned fire. We can't reveal his name. He's not been charged with the attack on those officers yet. And new Judge Lillard had a warrant out for his arrest when he allegedly attacked Detroit police over the weekend. Now Judge Lillard made sure he did not get away. I would have remanded him anyway. And when you add on top of it the fact that he's alleged to have engaged in new violent criminal activity, certainly I do think under the circumstance a remand is appropriate. So the defendant will be remanded. You can hear Judge Lewis. She said he would be remanded. No bond tonight being held on that gun charge. The other charges are uh, expected to be filed uh, tomorrow. Also, just check with Detroit police. They say all three officers involved in this incident all doing fine tonight. We're live downtown. Sean Light, Local 4. Hey, Sean. More than 60 cats will soon need a loving home after the Humane Society rescued the felines from a house on Detroit's west side. For the most part, these cats are okay. Detroit police said the homeowner meant well, but just got in over her head. You can see the cats were pretty much overrunning the home on West Lafayette near Grand Boulevard. The Humane Society points out anyone who is in a similar situation should ask for help because there are many resources for the animals. A drunk driver who was behind the wheel in a deadly crash at a Detroit bus stop learned his fate today. 56-year-old Ralph Davis was sentenced to five years probation, the first six months of that probation to be served in the Wayne County Jail. Davis was under the influence of alcohol and medication when he lost control of his truck and slammed into a D-dot bus stop, killing one man and causing serious injury to two other people. One of the victims who suffered a brain injury addressed Davis and the court. May God keep you safe, and just like he kept me safe. So I am here to let you know that I forgive, but I'll never forget that day. Well, Davis expressed his sympathy to the victim's family in a short statement to the court. Uh, during his probation, Davis has to undergo random drug and alcohol testing. All right, let's turn now to Ben, who has uh, been out on the water fitting for the upcoming Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, Ben, all day you're uh, focusing on something very serious out there, high water levels. We've been talking about it for a while now. Yeah, Kim and Devin, there are record levels. We're on the shores of Lake St. Clair where the winds have calmed down a bit. But yesterday, these were coming out of the east, some days better than others. It's just puddles here today, but yesterday this was all submerged all the way down this street. And today they actually got some dry land. Uh, but those winds are still out there. They've just shifted directions. And you can see in our current conditions, they're out of the southwest. They've been gusting as high as 40 miles an hour plus today. Right now we're at 79 at Metro, 77 in Ann Arbor, and 79 also at Monroe. So those winds will continue to calm down as we get later on into the evening. By the way, while we were out here setting up this shot, this house that's just to our right here, the windows got blown out of this construction at that top level, the top back window that's facing the southwest. The owner just came over and said, it shattered, it's gone. So the uh, winds have been causing tremendous problems out here today, but of course this weekend it's all water and we'll be talking about the impacts on boaters and the folks who live along the Great Lakes here in just a few minutes. Guys? We'll see you in a little bit, Ben. Thank you. 14,000 DTE customers are still without power because of this morning's intense storms. Overall, 36,000 people were impacted, and DTE tells us crews are hoping to have power restored for most people by tonight. We're now getting a better look at the aftermath of a deadly tornado that ripped through parts of Missouri. For countless families in the capital city of Jefferson City, there is nothing left. And for those fortunate enough to still have something, picking up the pieces could take months, if not years. Jay Gray is on the ground with a closer look. Jay. Right now we're going to set up a tour and extend the damage to the whole county here. A massive funnel on the ground, part of a string of violent twisters that ripped across Missouri overnight. Windows started shaking, felt the house rattling, heard the tree break, and then boom, hear all the cars just crush. Daylight 
reveals the intensity of the tornadoes and the extent of the damage. Splintered wood and twisted metal scattered for miles. Cars and buses rolled. Homes and businesses crumbled. Some buildings completely wiped away. It's still kind of numb about the whole thing. It happened so quick. Stunned and battered survivors sifting through the rubble that was their home, searching for anything left of their lives before the storms. The biggest loss near Golden City. Three people killed during a tornado strike there. For more than a week, storms have ravaged the nation's heartland. Tornadoes cutting deep scars across Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. Flooding rains washing away neighborhoods. Now, crews begin the cleanup and recovery across the strike zone. You know, when you have chaos, you know, it's a matter of time, how do you organize chaos? And that's kind of what we're doing right now is trying to, to get people safe, make sure everybody's okay, still checking on people, still checking on property. And many still figuring out how to move on after the storms. Jay Gray, Local 4. Yeah, every available firefighter in Jeff City has been working around the clock, we're told. The department posted on Facebook today, please pray for our citizens. Much more ahead on this Thursday edition of Local 4 News at 5. Here's Rod. It's been six months since we've been inside Michigan Central Station. 100-year-old bottles. I think what's cool about this Coke bottle is it was made in Detroit. And it still has a lot of the old stuff. You got dripping water. Yes, you have new windows and there's still graffiti here, but they're fixing this place up. What's it looking like today? We'll bring you on a tour. Okay, Rod Plus, Ben's back with a wake alert. He'll tell us if this big boating weekend spells trouble for people along the lakeshore. But first, it was a major drug ring based here in Metro Detroit that did business all around the country. What was uncovered in a raid in Pontiac coming up next? And we continue to follow that breaking news that we told you about at the beginning of the newscast happening on Detroit's west side where a tree crushed a car and briefly trapped a child underneath. It happened on Wyoming where children were outside playing. Luckily, everyone escaped serious injury. Residents say the tree is old and rotten. It's not clear if anyone complained about the tree ahead of time. We'll have more coming up. Let me talk to you real quick. Swing this way so the sun. 